Alright, the second video is a review activity. This is looking at questions from the test, so we can actually go through these very quickly. Just um, work through each question with me. Don't worry so much about the answer key bubble, because I was going to do that for something else. But you are going to be handing this again in, in. Again, just make sure that you show everything and you know don't try to take any shortcuts. It's easy enough to do. You're just following along and um, writing down whatever the answers are. Uh, you remember all these questions, or should remember all these questions, and if not, and circle it so you know that you need to go ahead and study that one. But on this one, remember that if n is on this side with negative 27, that we want to add 27 to both sides, getting the answer of 81 for your answer of n. Keep in mind, this test is big. It has a lot of the questions that you had from um, um, the chapter 1 test or chapter 2 test from the end of the year. You just have to now kind of bring those things back to memory and get ready to knock them out again. Number two is negative r over 19 equals 23. So again on this, the first thing I would do because my fraction is negative is turn r over 19 positive. Just don't forget to make your 23 negative and then multiply both sides by 19, which is negative 437. So again, negative fraction, flip it first, multiply second, make your life easy. Unless you already have a system that works and you've used it enough times that you know it works, that's fine. But again, just be careful on that because if you're not, then you could end up uh, missing a very easy question there. Number three is the home question with a decimal. So all we've got to do is make sure we don't do anything crazy. In here, the first thing we're going to do is add three to both sides because remember 1.2 is directly attached, so the three has to go first. So negative 1.2x equals 3.2. And again, I know that because it's 0 0.2 plus three. The next thing we do, again, that negative number, if I were you, is switch it to make this 3.2 negative. And the last thing I would do is divide by 1.2. Again, make sure you're copy or writing down every one of these steps because that is part of what you're doing for your points. Don't want to get a zero for just not doing your job there when all you have to do is honestly just copy the stuff that's on here. So negative 2 point, we'll just put negative 2.7 for that. And that would be your answer for that question. All right. Number four has 11 over 13x equals 77. It's another fraction. Key thing to remember here is that when we multiply by 13 on both sides, because that's how you get rid of the bottom number, that those two things cancel out, bringing down 11x and whatever 77 times 13 is, which is 1,001. Afterwards, divide by 11. and get 91 is your answer. Also make sure you're typing some of these things in, especially if you've had an issue typing things into your calculator to verify. You've got all hour, you've got actually two days to go through this thing. So just make sure you're doing what you need to do to uh, know that you're going to be able to get these answers right. Again, this is pretty much looking at the test in front of you. Um, so just make sure you're taking advantage of this so you can get a nice grade on it and not have to worry about passing this quarter because again a nice first test grade is going to help you out. Number five, we've got 17x plus 13 equals 140. First thing we want to do is subtract our 13 from that, getting 17x equals 127. From there, move the 17 by dividing. I think this is getting very repetitive and probably boring for some of you. We got just mess up. Probably did. Uh, 7.5. Five is what we'll put on that. I don't think you'll have a decimal on that question on a test, but I mess up on occasion for those. Sorry about that. Number six, again, hopefully you know this already. Take that problem, turn that to plus 15. From there, solve as usual, subtract 15. Subtract 15, you get 18x equals whatever 231 minus 15 is, which is 216. Let's see if we get another decimal here. 
divide by 18 to get that by itself. And we get a nice answer of 12. Again, just make sure you're copying these things down. It's just a real fast walk through the test to make sure you've at least seen one more time what's going to be on it. And then that way I know that you're, you've been prepared as much as I can possibly prepare you for it. And everything else is on you from there. Also keep in mind you can rewind, you can pause. So do what you need to do to go ahead and get all this stuff. But I'm just working through it and trying to talk through it so you know what's going on. Negative 84.2 equals 42.7 plus E. Here we've got to subtract 42.7 because it's positive. Just make sure you type it in. I think that's what messed up a lot of people before. Plus negative 42.7, which is negative 126.9 for your answer of E. All right. I'll stop that so you can write. Here you've got to distribute your fraction. Yes, it ends up as 1 9th x, but 1 9th times 45. Keep in mind you've got to do the 1 9th as a fraction, then arrow out times 45 to get the answer of 5. Also keep in mind some of you like to multiply to get rid of the fraction, but you really don't need to get rid of a fraction if it's just 1. Just go ahead and move the number and you'll get rid of the fraction in time. Bring down your 1 9th x equal to 3. And then from there, you can multiply both sides by 9, bringing down x equals 27. Remember, we don't need to bring down the 1 from our experience. In doing that, the 1x is just the same as x anyway. And so you end up with x equals 27. All right. Number 9. This is the one where we have to combine terms. Negative x, 18x, make 17x. That's because you have a negative 1 plus 18. Again, negative 1 there, 18 there, make 17. 23 and 23 make 46. All of that together equals 199. Now we're home. So we're going to subtract 46 from both sides. 199 minus 46 is 153. And then dividing by 17, I'm assuming that's 9. And it is. And that would be the answer that you get. Again, hopefully this is a good um, review here for you that you've seen all these questions that you remember all these questions and the tricks involved with these questions um, this will be the last time we see these questions until we start doing our review and practice but again the good news is we don't have to see these anymore I'm just doing these so you can try to do a very good job on this first test and not have to worry so much about fighting for the rest of the quarter uh, negative 3 and negative 6 if you remember make a positive 18 set all that up equal to 90 Again, the 11H comes down, distributes your negative 3. Now you put 11H with negative 3H to make 8H because 11 minus 3 is 8. From there, we're home. That should be a 90, not a 19. We subtract 18. We get 8H equals 72. We divide by 8. to get h is equal to 9 again. All right. Number 11, the problem on this one is that you've got x's on both sides. Remember, you have to move this x over there by making it negative. You cannot just put the 10x together with the x because there's a wall in between them. That gives us 9x plus 3 equals 30. You then subtract 3 from both sides, getting 9x equals 27. You then divide by 9, getting x equals 3. And that is all. Number 12, distribute first. Don't forget it's not 4x plus 3, it's 4x plus 12. 
equals 20 because you've got to do 4 times 3 on that one. Subtract 12 from both sides, bringing down 4x equals 8, and then dividing by 4 on both sides to get x is equal to 2. Keep in mind you want to put a circle around, you want to circle any questions that um, are problems that you know you've missed or problems that you can't really remember as well. That way you have uh, something on your study guide to kind of remind you on where you need to study the most and then that way you'll know where to look if you happen to study for this test. Remember that this is called a proportion and remember that in proportions we cross multiply. This is the one where 50 meets K and 2 meets 5. Once you get that you should be okay. 50 times K is 50K. 2 times 5 is 10. Just don't forget you divide by what's attached to the K not the other number so we actually want to divide by 50 here. So 10 over 50 gives me a decimal which I convert if you remember using that arrow button here to be one-fifth. So one-fifth would be my answer to that question. Fourteen is also a proportion. Cross multiply. Twenty-two meets three. X minus two meets four. This side here gives me sixty-six, but again the part where people are messing up is they're forgetting to distribute. That turns into four X minus eight, which then from there you want to go ahead and add eight to both sides, getting is that seventy-four? equals 4x and then dividing by 4 to get whatever 74 over 4 is 18.5 which when you convert that turns into 37 over 2 as your value of x and there you go Fifteen is the word problem talking about the airplane going 374 miles in the first four hours again the trick here was that it wants a proportion 374 miles in four hours means that should be your first fraction 374 over 4 500 miles remember your miles link up so that your miles being 374 it means 500 should go on top with T on the bottom from there we cross multiply 374 meets T and 4 meets 500. That turns into 374t equals 2000, which then to get t by itself, you divide by 374. Some people missed this for some reason on the test, and I don't know how they did, but they got as far as they they got as far as this, and somehow or another typed it in wrong or something. Just remember, this is the one where you can actually use a decimal because um, it is a real word problem and you're talking time. If you turn it into a fraction, that's fine. If you wanted to put 1,000 over 187, I would accept that too. Just make sure, again, that you are um, um, at least doing it the right way, setting up your fraction, putting miles on top with the 374, or if your 374 was on the bottom, that you link those two things up the right way. Solve for y here means I want y by itself. If I want y by itself, it means the first thing I have to do is move 12x by subtracting it, bringing down 8y equals whatever is over here, which is 20 minus 12x. You then divide by 8. Now, there is a trick here that you need to be careful of. And I would accept 20 minus 12x over 8. But you might see somebody say that this is um, going to be 5 minus 3x over 2 and here is why because all three of these numbers divide by 4 and it has to be where all three numbers divide 20 divided by 4 is 5 12 divided by 4 is 3 8 divided by 4 is 2 and so either one of those two answers would work I accept this but again just trying to make sure that you know uh, what's going on if you happen to do that Seventeen is another one we should get right. Just make sure you take your time on it. Again, people who missed it barely missed it. I just think that you just need to make sure you don't do anything crazy. Remember, it wants percent change, which means the first thing you have to do is identify how much it changed by subtracting those two numbers. So 8750 
minus 52.75, which is 34.75. Remember, that's your change. But to make a percent, we have to divide two things, which means we take the amount of change and divide it always by the original. So 34.75 divided by 87.50 gives me if we're cutting off at two points, 39% would work, but remember that seven bumps it up to make it 40. So we're looking at a 40%, and this would be from here to here a decrease. Now I know I didn't do it, but remember my advice to you was to write the increase or decrease first, and then do that, do that part of the problem, but just make sure again that you do have the percent and the direction on your um, answer so that you can get full credit for that whenever you do it. 18, I think on your hint, I told you to translate it. Remember that this turns into x, is means equals, 27% turns into 0 0.27. You don't just bring down 27. You've got to convert it by moving the decimal two spots back. Don't forget that of means times and that 90 is what goes over here. Because x is by itself, we're going to leave it over there and simply type in 0 0.27 times 90 because we have to simplify it to be 24.3 and that is all. There is no need to shift that number. It doesn't need to be because it's just a number. It's not a percentage. It's just an actual number. That is 27 percent of 90. Alright. Almost done. Just a few more word problems and, and application problems going on. Conversions again. Remember the key thing on the conversion is your question mark part. I saw a lot of you do well on that on the quiz. Um, since I don't know seconds, it's going to be question mark seconds equals whatever we have already, which is seven minutes. Remember again that if minutes is here, I need minutes down there, and that my conversion is that one minute is 60 seconds. That means that one minute goes down here because I want those two things to cancel. 60 seconds goes up there, and because it's up top, it means that we multiply getting 420 seconds for that. And again, just make sure it makes sense. Does seven minutes seem like 420 seconds? To me, it does. Some of you are going to divide and do seven divided by 60, and you're going to say that seven minutes is equal to 0 0.1 seconds, and that doesn't make sense because every minute is at least 60 seconds. And so you can kind of use your common sense to say you obviously went the wrong way to go the other way. But again, 420 seconds would be the answer on that one. Number 20, again, question mark first, question mark pounds equals 60 ounces. Keep in mind the number for ounces and pounds is that one pound equals 16 ounces. And so if we got ounces here, it means we need 16 ounces on the bottom. We need one pound on the top. Those two things cancel. Because it's on the bottom, that means we divide 60 by 16 and you get 3.75 because it's not a bunch of numbers I can leave the 3.75 just fine or just fine 3.75 pounds is what you end up with on that alright so that was everything you learned up into last week and the last four questions are the ones that you should have just seen on the um, or, or the video before which is the last four problems that you're the word problems that you have to deal with and again, just making sure you recognize it when you see it. In all honesty, when you take the test, I would just make sure that you pick the one that you're good at, do those first, and then try to think your way through the other ones. This one here is the cell phone bill averaging 119.19 per month based on a fixed fee and a per minute usage. Remember that this represents a total, and that whenever you see the total, you want to write it down and put an equal sign. It's actually 19, not 49 and that a fixed fee only happens once so it's 46.95 and 0.24 per minute so 0.24 m because remember per means multiply that by the minute from there we have our equation we just solved the way we were taught to solve which is to subtract 46.95 from both sides carefully That gives me 7224 equals 0 0.24m. 
and then of course from there we're going to divide by 0 0.24 which is 301. And so again, when you see that problem, just remember again, the total should go by itself. Put the other two numbers on the other side. The fixed fee only happens once, but 24 cents per minute means put 0.24 M because that's what we were taught to do um, in chapter one at the beginning of the year. 22 is your rental car agency, charge 19 plus 0.08, another one charging 28 plus 0.05. Again, remember you want to do company one, which is 19 plus that. So you put 19 plus 0 0.08 M, and you want it to equal the cost. And so company number two is 28 plus 0 0.05 M. Moving the smaller one, we move the 0 0.05 M which gives us 19 plus 0 0.03 I believe yep equals 28 moving your 19 that would be 9 and then of course dividing by 0 0.03 just be careful about that because again all those decimals people tend to mess up in writing them so be careful on that but here your answer is 300 miles is your cutoff point where one would be where they would equal the same and you want to make your decision but again that there is is what you're looking at on that question if you don't get that question right I'm gonna go over go over some information for you to let you kinda of see um, what's going on on this test what each questions worth and then that way you can kind of see what your target is um, here dimensions of a rectangle 4.7 meters by 2.4 meters find the perimeter by using the formula 2w plus 2l notice that this is a it's got an equal sign but it's an equation it's got width and length and remember it gives us two dimensions which means just put one of those in for width one of those in for length so we're going to put 4.7 in for w 2.4 in for L and simply type those things in 2 parentheses 4.7 plus 2 parentheses 2.4 which is 14.2 and that is all and then the last question for this worksheet length of a rectangle is 3 times the width an equation at miles of perimeter is 2, 2w plus 6w equals 40 Again, they want length and width of the rectangle, so even though this is an equation that we'll just pull out, again, this is an equation, not an actual formula, because it says an equation that models that is here. It means that we solve it by putting our w's together. We divide by 8 to get that w is 5, and that's one dimension, but again, it wants length and width. And notice it says the length is 3 times the width, so that means length is going to be 3w which means it's 3 times 5 or 15 so the width is 5 the length is 15 and that should do it again remember you can check that by going 5 plus 5 plus 15 plus 15 notice that that gives us the answer of 40 which is what it says the perimeter should be and that is it now here again is what we learned from our percentage part there are 24 questions on the test that means each question is worth 1 out of 24 so when I do that, each question is worth about 4%. So every question you get right is 4%. That means if you want a 60%, which is a passing grade, divide that by 4. It means you need to find 15 questions that you can answer right. Looking back through here, I think we should be able to do that because from what I see, um, there are definitely some easy questions here that you can study and get ready for in terms of this test. So let's just look back through this real quick since we have the time anyway. And um, there is a question at the end you have to answer so make sure you watch all the way to the end. Um, but just looking at this real fast, finding 15. So I'm going to count as we go. I don't think we should miss that. That should be one. I think we should be able to handle this. That should be two. Home might be an issue but again 
I think that should be within our reach because a lot of you are still getting that right. The fraction is easy enough. Another home problem is easy enough. You're already at five. You then have the question where you turn your double negative into a positive. That's six. You have the question where all you honestly have to do is subtract a number and move it over. That's seven. You have the problem where you just have to know how to do a fraction times a number. That's eight. All right, maybe I won't count that because it does have a lot, but that could be nine. This could be 10, but again, it's got the, the parentheses in there, so I'm not going to say you will get it right, but I'm going to say you should get it right. 11 should be within your reach, and that is, I think, 8. I don't remember. I'm getting old. No, it's 9. I think you should know how to distribute. That would be your question number 10. Even if we don't like um, proportions, I think you should be able to get the first one right, maybe not the second one because it's got the other parts, but that's still 11 questions that you can get right. Um, conversions, even if you just divide both of them by the conversion factor, you're going to get one of these two things right. Or if you just multiply both of them by the same thing, you're going to get one of those right. So that would give you 12 here, um, 13. I think we should be able to do percent increase. So that's 13 questions. Excuse me, you should be able to do. I'm not going to say you should have to be able to do the percent um, problem. Um, I'm not going to say you should be able to do the airplane problem or the solve for y. And we're at 13 right now. I don't think anything's tough about this. I honestly think you, this should be your 14th. And this should be your 15th because all you have to do is solve the equation. So, again, I do expect that you should be able to do a pretty good job on this test. Just make sure that you. Um, study this thing, take it seriously. Uh, remember that your pretest on Wednesday counts. If you knock that out on the pretest, that is great. That means you put yourself in good position. Make sure you come back Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday so you can take the pretest, um, go over your answers, and then take it again as the actual test on Friday. <coughs> Thank you for your time. Hand this paper in, by the way, whenever you get done.